was a boat called the um it was called the um the boat was called the um, um it was a big shrimp boat Tom had to end up work, working on that boat in the South Pacific. It was called the Papa George. It was blowing 35, 40 knots in the southerly. The southerlies are unpredictable. They're out of the south. They can't predict them there. And uh, we didn't have Channel 16 on, which is the Coast Guard station. And all of a sudden, we had heard that the, uh, um, later the, the Papa George had went down. We tried to go into the Columbia River, but the waves were breaking so big, and the spray was so big, we couldn't do that. So I p pointed towards Westport, which is about 40 miles up north, and I had the Norse literally push me into the uh, the port, which I was able to do. Well, what happened was the guy loaned his boat to uh, one of the other skippers, and the skipper, uh, he didn't know how to bail out the boat. The boat ended up sinking. The skipper died. The dog died. The crew was on a boat. Uh, lifeboat. They ended up putting a rope around the skipper's neck and dragging him to shore to the sand to the beach and brought him in. Well, Tom had worked on that boat in the South Pacific. Okay, and we made it on the top cat. We were like, one of the only boats out there that day. So, I say that's the end of the year. Okay, that's it. It's around September 20th. I'm done. So I get a call around September, somewhere around maybe 21st, 23rd. And Tom goes, hey, Eric, you know, I want to use your boat. And I said, I don't know, you know, insurances and all this stuff. And, and by the way, I looked and I said, there's a southerly coming up, Tom. You don't want to go out there. There's a southerly coming up. And he said, oh, well, you know, I said, no, Tom, we can't do that. So he goes on his friend's boat, the Ida May, to fish for black cod. These are deep water cod out about 15 miles. And about, you know, a couple days later, I get this call from Dan, a mutual friend of ours, a mechanic. And the name of Tom's boat was the Never Level, and he goes, um, no more Never. He calls you Eric. I go, what, Dan? He goes, no more Never Level. And I thought, oh, okay, well, the harbor took his boat because he didn't pay the bills. They chop it up. That's what they do. They chop your boats up if you don't pay the bills there. The, all ports do that. Or I figured, you know, something happened to the boat sank because it leaked. He had an old wood boat from 1946. Or I, I, I didn't know. He goes, no, the Coast Guard, um, you know, found, uh, they, they found him. I go, what do you mean they found him? And, and he told me the story. Well, what happened was it was blowing about 35, 40 knots. They were coming into the Columbia River. And uh, um, he told one of the new kids on the boat to go inside because the weather was coming up and he was going to flay the fish. And... They went to look back there, and, and he was gone. Well, they turned around the boat and went over to see him. And what was ironic was, was Tom didn't know how to swim. And I was going to take him across the river to Astoria. One side's Washington, one side's Oregon. They had a big pool there. I was going to say, hey, Tom, hey, I'm a surfer. Let me teach you how to swim. You know, I was going to do that that year, and I never did. Well, he also had boots on. And if you hit the water with boots, they say you can, you know, you can go down. Well... They saw him, and he had this white look on his face, and his hands were up. And as they approached him, he sank into the sea, just like that. So that was the end of Tom. Well, that was 2007. And, uh, and then I just kind of, you know, my buyer said they only wanted 3,000 pounds a week, and it just wasn't worth it. I could make more in the antique business. And all the sacrifices I would have to make, you know, commercial fishing, I just didn't want to do it anymore. So it's 2010 now, and I haven't fished um, since up there. Now I just have a little teeny boat. I put out about a mile or two, and I'm completely full in the antique business. I deal with Sotheby's and Christie's on a daily basis, international auction houses. I go to about 20 auctions a week. And, um, you know, that's the story. Uh, thanks for listening. If you guys have any ideas, any movies, any scripts, whatever you want to do, we can do. I'm around. Thank you.